What is a history fact that is so stupid it doesn't seem real? A man from New York missed his friends who were fighting in Vietnam. So he traveled thousands of miles to track them down in a combat zone to personally give them beer and letters from home. He even wrote a book about it called The Greatest Beer Run Ever. This is the best thing ever. I'm envisioning a drunk dude in a Hawaiian shirt with an upside down map walking through the jungle in Vietnam yelling, Hey, Mickey, George, you guys here? It's Tony. You guys are stupid. See, they're gonna be looking for army guys. Tycho Bray, an astronomer, had a pet moose. That moose later died from a fall down the stairs because it was drunk. Everything about Tycho Bray is amazing. His nose was cut off in a duel and replaced by a prosthetic made out of gold. He died when his bladder exploded because he drank too much alcohol. He had a friend, Jeb, who he believed was a psychic dwarf. He was one of the wealthiest men in Denmark and owned a private island which housed his observatory before he went into exile after a spat with the 11 year old king. I like to think that Jep was actually like an inch shorter than Taicho, but Taicho just kept insisting he was a psychic dwarf. And now that's all that anyone knows about Jep. Not one but two kings of France died by smashing their heads on the top part of a door. Lintel? Close bracket. Charles VIII in 1498, the shock probably caused something else but still. Louis III on the other hand was pursuing a fair lady, who was actually trying to escape him, on his horse on the 5th of August 882, when she passed a door, the horse went through, not the king, who broke his skull and died instantly, Come on. More people have died from drowning in molasses, than being attacked by coyotes. That's just because molasses got lucky. Alright I don't remember the specifics. But there was a king, I believe a Sumerian king, who was told by an oracle that disaster would befall the king. So he had a gardener crowned as king for a day, and that night the gardener would be executed, thus fulfilling the prophecy and saving the real king. Soon after the gardener's coronation, the real king choked on soup and died. The gardener ruled for 24 years. Honduras and El Salvador had a three-day war over a football game, like a really violent riot. All their governments actually got their militaries involved. The sixth president had a pet alligator and Ryan Reynolds failed drama class. I wonder how the teacher and the top drama student feel about that now. I don't see why their opinions on John Adams alligator would be different from ours. King George II was so constipated while he was taking a crap his heart actually physically burst. Henry VIII ate so little fiber that he needed a doctor specializing in enemas so he can poop. George IV basically ate himself to death. He had such bad gout from a lifetime of indulging in meat and wine that by the end of his life, he needed 100 drops of laudanum to get him through breakfast. Jude eventually shat himself to death after a violent bowel movement caused a massive intestinal bleed. While we are at it, Edmund II of England died on the toilet when an assassin stabbed him in the ass from the under the latrine pit he was sitting on. King Jing of Jin, spring and autumn period. China accidentally walked into the open air says bit of a toilet and drowned. I'm impressed at how well versed you are on this topic. Adolf Hitler had many physical ailments, many of which are known. He had in particular severe stomach cramps and also bouts of insomnia, so his quack doctor Theodore Morrill, in his infinite wisdom, gave Hitler sleeping pills and laxative, resulting in very severe gas problems. His gas problem was more related to his diet. During the war he was on a very poorly constructed, mostly, vegetarian diet and, well, you can only have beans and lentils in a stew, so many days in a row, before you start with bad gas. Man was crazy picky. Although I could go on a year long speech about moral and all his stuff. Man is confusing as all get out with all the stuff he did. And is actually an interesting window into how the whole Nazi regime actually worked. Dude sounds like some kind of food Nazi. The guy that my username was named after. King Alfred. Pushed back the invading viking armies. And then revolutionized the educational system. Social system legal system and like a dozen other things, there's a reason he's called Alfred the Great. He was also very famously yelled at by an old lady because he was too busy plotting a military campaign to watch the cakes that she had in the oven. 
I just find it silly that one of the greatest monarchs in English history was yelled at by an old lady for the same kinds of trivial things that people have been angry at each other over forever. It's an odd juxtaposition. I wonder how many times he was told to watch the cakes and how many times he said he would actually watch them and not just mm met the lady before he was yelled at. Also, if he replied with a mmmmn, he should not have been yelled at as he did not hear the request to watch the cakes, nor did he agree to watch the cakes. In my country some politicians literally got you yeeted out of a window and survived because they fell into some manure. They started a war with the ones who you yeeted them after. There's actually a word for that. Defenestrate. To throw someone out of a window. A Greek philosopher called Chrysippus died from laughing too much at a drunken donkey eating rotting, therefore fermented, figs. The reason there isn't a lot of mummies around anymore is because we ate them. We also made paint out of them and used them to fuel trains. A prominent Roman politician, Publius Clodius Pulcher, dressed as a woman to infiltrate a woman's only religious ceremony in a futile effort to seduce Julius Caesar's wife. Not surprisingly, his plan didn't work. Charges were pressed and caused a very public legal battle for the next two years. At the insistence of his wife, none other than the famous Cicero came to prosecute the case. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Crassus, yes, the same Crassus of the first triumvirate and richest person in Rome at this point, bribed the jury and Pulcher was acquitted. In the meantime, Caesar divorced his wife over the affair. Surprisingly, though, this didn't tank Pulcher's career. Instead, it strengthened his alliance and he became a rather prominent politician. Once he gained more power, he was able to pass a laurel, which retroactively applied to Cicero, banishing him from Rome and allowing the state to confiscate or destroy his property. While political enmity was present, much of it was also revenge. This isn't all. He also employed street gangs to dog his bidding. They'd gather at opposing politicians' speeches and heckle them. They'd blockade roads so politicians couldn't make it to an important vote. They'd rough up people they didn't like. Another opposing politician, Milo, didn't care for this up and brought up his own street gangs. The difference was that Milo's gangs were trained by gladiators. General street violence erupted in the streets of Rome. The street violence caused two delays to important elections and eventually Milo caused the death of Pulcher in Scuffle. When placed on trial, Milo had none other than Cicero, now returned from exile, be his defense lawyer. Despite his best efforts, Milo was exiled. Hold up, you write all that, but somehow leave out the part where Clodius's supporters broke into the Senate house with his body and held the funeral service there. Then they burned the whole thing down around him. So four years after the Senate didn't have a meeting house of its own, you know how basically every depiction of Julius Caesar has him getting killed inside the Senate house didn't actually happen because Rome's Senate didn't have its own building until after Caesar died. They were meeting inside a theater and had been for years, all because Clodius's fans went nuts. Frederick I Holy Roman Emperor drowned because he went for a swim with his armor on. During Captain Cook's time in Hawaii, a Hawaiian woman approached him and showed him and his crew her naked body. This was a way to let the sailors see her tattoos which signified that she was a mature adult and capable of doing business with outsiders. They took it as a sexual invitation and raped her instead. When more people began started switching to skim milk dairy farmers had tons of milk fat left over, so they stored it all in some caves in Missouri. This lead the Uster to open a department on dairy management to figure out what to do with it. Want to know why almost every fast food item comes with so much cheese? That's why. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video, leave your thoughts in the comments below.